Hey, uh, hi, I'm Pavel Fertuk. Uh, I'm from Miskatonic Studio. Uh, you might remember me from. Sorry, can you speak up? Please? Yeah, sorry. Uh, I can send now, but then I will have to see it for the demo. But I can start like, like this. Uh, so last year, I was also a speaker here, and I presented a 3D game made in Godot called Intrepid. You can see it on Steam. And after making that game, I've received a lot of feedback. Partly about the user experience. Um, people, for example, said that uh, I inventory items uh, were accessed by function keys and not by numeric keys, which was very unintuitive for them. But I couldn't do it another way because the uh, numeric keyboard was already used in a computer program input. There was an interactive program in, in the game. Uh, also, people said that they are not very uh, sure if they can interact with an object or not, uh, which was part of the game because it was supposed to be an escape room. That was a wrong idea, now I know it. And, uh, but still, I think I could have done a better job uh, indicating that something can be interacted with or not. Uh, so after receiving a lot of feedback about that, I needed to take some time off. Uh, then I started experimenting with board games in Godot. And after the last uh, GodotCon in uh, October in Poznan, I decided to come back to this uh, um, topic of 3D games uh, and this time I wanted to fix the user experience. Uh, it was supposed to end in a small nice game, of course it didn't. Uh, I picked a wrong script and I struggled with that, then I overscoped and eventually I made, a, instead of a nice game uh, which I wanted to work on five, for five months, I started working on a small framework and a demonstration of that framework that is included inside. And in I would like to introduce that today. The framework is called Godot Open Adventure Template, short GOAT. It's available on GitHub as of this morning. Uh, you can check it out. Um, in short, it's a tool that is supposed to make, to, to help you make 3D adventure games. Uh, it's, it supports basic interaction, invent, uh, simple inventory, inventory, uh, items, uh, using items on other items, and so on. And yeah, and I would like to, uh, in, in uh, there are concepts like most items, mo most things here are based on signals, global signals, that you can connect to at any uh, time. Uh, most items have names which are assumed to be unique. Uh, so then you can, uh, when you receive a signal with an item name, you know it was activated or added or deleted or selected or whatever. And uh, I would like to talk. Uh, I would like to show you how to use it today. Um, all right. So uh, the template itself has two main directories. One is a directory with, with the template uh, files, which is Goat. Usually, you don't need to change that. That provides some uh, global files, some scenes that you can use. And the other one is the directory with your game. Inside the repository, there is one game already. But when you start working on your own game, you will probably delete this and create your own. So let's do that. I have, uh, I have already created a very, very simple, uh, a, a bunch of simple files for, for this demonstration. So let's say that you want to start working on, a, um, on your own game. Being a, Reasonable, per reasonable person, you will start with a main menu, with a button play that doesn't do anything yet because there is no gameplay yet. So let's create, uh, let's create a gameplay. And yeah. And let's uh, run it after this button is played. Of course, this is not part of the GOAT framework yet. This is, uh, this is vanilla Godot. Uh, so cool. And now, when we click play, nothing happens, of course, because we don't even have a camera in our gameplay. So let's fix that. And here is where Godot makes things easier. You will cre you can create a player uh, sorry in, in instantiate a player scene and player is basically a three dimensional camera uh, that can move interact with objects that has its own collision area 
just to show that it can move around something, let's add a mesh instance, which will be a box. And let's try things now. And yeah, we have a camera, we can move around. We cannot move through the box and because the box uh, was also uh, uh, surrounded by a collision area. And what else we have is this inventory that is at the moment empty. Uh, we will fix that in, uh, uh, soon. And we get this setting screen that you can play with. And you can also resume the game and you can exit, except exit uh, ends the game by default. So we need to change that. And this is going to be one of the most uh, one, one of the boring settings of uh, Goat, but we are going to start easy. So let's create a new script. Sorry, I uh, uh, I have to speak that way and not your way, but uh, there there is a slight problem with uh, monitor. And we will add it as a single, uh, uh, as a auto, uh, yeah, as a singleton in Godot. Ah, okay. So uh, add and probably move it to our game directory. So yeah. Mm -hmm. We can set go to exit scene. And unfortunately, this will not give us hints. We have to type it by hand. Um, and let's try it now. OK, now when we click Exit, we go back to main menu, just like we wanted to. But that was, of course, uh, not what games are all about. Games are about interaction. So let's add some models. Um, I didn't make these. Uh, these were made by Dalton5000. You can check out his game that he's working on. And now, now that we play the game, we can see nice models, walls, and we can see uh, there is a light bulb. So how about a basic interaction of turning the light off and on. Basic interaction would be made by interactive item, which is this. Interactive item has a bit of configuration. First, it has a unique name, which in our case would be switch. It has one of three types, normal single use inventory. I will talk about all of them. Uh, inventory name, inventory item name is only used for inventory items. There is collision shape. We can also add a sound. Why not? Mm. And it wouldn't hurt to add a model. Uh, without a model, it will also work, but it will not uh, show anything. So model switch. And let's put the switch on a wall. Shit. Mm. Ah, okay. My bad, I've moved the model, not the switch itself. Yeah. Uh, okay, so if we run the game now, we can see that. If the switch gets in range, we can see an, in, uh, an icon that indicates this item can be interacted with. If it goes out of range, the, item, uh, the icon disappears. If we click on it, then a global signal is sent that an item was activated. And we are going to use that signal to add basic uh, interaction with this scene. So for that, we will need a script. We will connect to go to interaction which is a global module handling uh, interactions between objects. Connect, object activated. And we are going to create this function. 
the signal will have two uh, arguments with it. First is the name of the object, and the other is the point at which interaction took place, which in our case is not going to be important because we are only interested in if the whole switch was activated, not parts of it. So let's just print the name of the object that was current that was just activated and it will take a moment for it to appear. I just clicked the switch. It usually takes a moment to out for output to, uh, to update, but you can see that switch appears there. So if I click it, click it again, then there it is. So uh, now we know that we can Mm, react to an object being activated. So let's see if object, le let's check if object name is switch. And if so, we are going to, uh, on, we are going to turn off and on the light energy of the lamp. Lamp is this node. So lamp light energy is going to be either zero if there is an energy or one if there isn't. All right, let's see if it works. So, okay. And there it is. I'm not sure, uh, uh, you probably don't hear it, but there should be a sound. Every time we activate this object, the, the sound that we attach to it, the button sound, should go off. Uh, do we have a speaker or something? Uh, Can you hear it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Mm. All right. I think I'm going to keep it on speaker because I would like to, the audience here to hear it. Uh, all right, let's turn off this game. Now, there it is. We have this very simple object. Uh, what else can we do with it? Uh, we can change the type to single use, which is the same thing as no normal object will be activated multiple times. Single use will be activated only once and then it will stop being active. For example, if you have a barrel that you push and the barrel is then on the ground, you cannot push it again. Uh, and there is also an inventory uh, item type, which is something that you can pick up. So let's try that. Mm We'll create another interactive item. This time we will call it uh, floppy. It will be an inventory item type. An inventory item name will be floppy disk. This will be the name, as I said before, uh, most things are based on names and signals here. So this will be a unique name of the floppy disk that we are going to add to inventory after this one is activated. And we are going to add a model. Uh, A very simple one, uh, sorry, doing the same mistake again. Um, and I'm going to move it on the shelf, let's say. And let's see what happens now. I'm not sure if I will be able to see. Okay, yeah, it, it's hovering above, above the shelf, but you get the idea. And now, if we activate this object, the program will cr crash because we didn't configure the interactive item. It's not that easy. Uh, so first of all, uh, in order to use, sorry, uh, inventory items. In order, in order to use inventory items, first we need to tell Goat where the game files are stored. This is just a normal path, but uh, other things will have to be stored in our game directory. So 
goat game resources director is going to be the name of the directory where we where we keep everything which is awesome game in this case now this directory awesome game needs two subdirectories so, uh, sorry needs one subdirectory which is called in inventory items Each item is represented by a three-dimensional model, which is a Godot spatial scene, and a two-dimensional icon, which will be shown in the inventory bar. So we need to add those two in two separate fo folders, icons and models. For an icon, I've prepared something like this. A very simple one, but it will do. Let's move it to icons and for the floppy disk I've prepared something like this so we also have to move this floppy disk scene to models now that we have our icon and our model mm, we need to register the uh, inventory item at some point, I hope the framework might detect those things automatically, but now you need to tell it uh, specifically which item it, need, it can use in an inventory. So go to inventory in this case, register item, and we just need to put a name. This name has to match the name of the icon, and this name has to match the name of the model, but following the, convention, the naming convention for uh, Godot scenes. So not, not snake case in this case. All right, and let's try it now. So now when I pick this up, you can see that something was added to an inventory and we have a three-dimensional model. We can rotate it and yeah, can we do other stuff with it? Yes, because we can also use those interactive items here. So we have this nice shutter element. Uh, why don't we animate it? So Let's add an animation player. Uh, create a new animation, which will be called, let's say, shutter. Oh, sorry. Uh, one second is a bit too much. Let's put zero, four. Let's use this. Translation, yes. The end one is going to be the same. And this is going to be like slightly <coughs> moved. So the animation looks like this. And now in, we would like to uh, run this animation every time we click on it. So we need another interactive item, sorry. This item will be called shutter. Yeah. It will be a normal item. It will also have a sound associated with it. Uh, shutter sound. Yeah, that's basically it. But we probably have to move it like here. And oh, and now when we click it, a signal will be sent. So we should handle that signal here. We create a script. So go to interaction connect to object activated self again we will have object name and the point of interaction which we are going to ignore hmm. and if the name is equal to shutter then uh, animation player will play an animation let's see if it works okay so I pick up an item I can rotate it still you can see that there is an interactive icon here I'm sorry I cannot make the sound any louder, but it is there. People in the front row might hear it, okay. 
Uh, right. So another thing you want to do in adventure games is use items in different ways. Use them on another, for example. Uh, we cannot do it with what, uh, just one item, so I will add another one. Uh, that is called a battery. Just a very simple model with, with no logic involved. Of course, we need to register that item here. And we probably need to create a new inter inventory uh, a pickable uh, item that we, we can uh, put in our inventory. So another interactive item of type, this time battery. But uh, inventory, it will create a mo uh, uh, an item called battery. These two names don't have to be unique. Uh, no sound attached. We might need a model. <coughs> All right, and let's move it on the shelf. OK, it's there. And yeah. So now I can pick up two things and I can rotate bo both of them uh, independently. And I would like to use one of them on another one. So that is also represented by signals in. Uh, in GOAT, so let's uh, connect to a signal that tells us an item was used. Uh, the signal is called item used, but as you can see there are signals for item removed, replaced, selected, and so on. And signal used will have two arguments. What is a, an item that we are using and on what we are using it? So item name and used on name. And let's just print for the moment both of them. And let's see when that happens. So. If I click, uh, if, uh, if I want to use one of the items on another one, I can drag and drop it like this. And that will cause, for example, a floppy disk to be used on a battery, which should be, uh, you might not see it from the, the last row, but there is floppy disk battery. Okay, so if I, on the other hand, switch to a floppy disk and drag and drop the battery, we will get a signal battery used on floppy disk. Uh, I can also press this button uh, yes, battery floppy disk, which will send a signal that floppy disk was used on floppy disk, so used on itself. Uh, that is the type of interaction, for example, if you have an, an, an apple and you use it, then you probably want to eat it. If you have a lab coat and you use it, you want to put it on yourself. So that's the kind of interaction uh, this button does. But what if we have, if you want to use a thing from inventory outside of the inventory? So, for example, we have a key and we want to use it uh, on a door. For that, Goat uh, provides a context inventory. You need to right click on this and you get this small menu. And now if I pick floppy disk, it should show that floppy disk used on switch. So yeah, floppy disk switch. And now it will be battery switch. So we can use items from the inventory on uh, other stuff outside. And we can react to those situations, for example, by uh, setting the, the game state to something different, or removing items from our inventory, or adding new items, whatever you want. Uh, OK. That was inventory uh, interactive items. But another thing that Goat supports is interactive screens. So let's say that you have 
a two-dimensional screen like this, a two-dimensional scene of any kind, really. Uh, well, this one has a very simple logic. Uh, and you would like to put that in your game. Uh, I don't know, you, you, you can create a game console that you pick up from a shelf and then you play on it in your uh, inventory because that also will work, work in the inventory. So this time we will use interactive screen. And if you can see it, yeah, interactive screen already comes with a surface and it also has a configuration. So first we need to put a unique name. Then we need to know how big the content is. In our case, the content is 600 per 400 pixels. So let's put that. And one more thing that we need to do, uh, this node needs to know where, what is the content. So we are going to add awesome screen as its child and we are going to change the name to content. Sorry. Uh, and we are probably going to put it somewhere else, maybe here. Shit. And let's run the game now. So there is the screen, and when you approach the screen, you can see a different type of interaction icon. This was a hand that suggests that you can like push it or pick it up, and this is a pointing finger, so it suggests that you can click on it. It works with hover, it works with clicking. Currently, when, when, uh, it doesn't support holding the button, but it supports uh, just a short click. Uh, the only problem is that this is a bit like uh, deformed because our content is 600 per 400 pixels and here we have uh, a square and it will always be a square and because that way the position of the mouse is mapped correctly but we can scale it and that will not uh, influence the position and now we will see the same screen without deformation that's right Another thing that you might want in your game is uh, you could, uh, your protagonist could probably say something uh, to comment your behavior or to add to the storyline. Uh, that can also be done with Goat. Uh, as with inventory items, we need a directory for it. So we, cre uh, we should create a voice directory. So let's, let's do it right now. And in that voice directory, we can put all of the voice samples that we want to use. I should power it up first. I should power it up first. I should okay. power. By default, it's looped. Uh, so this is going to be the voice that we are that we want to use. Uh, we have put it in the voice directory. Okay. So what next? Next, we want to register it just like we registered the inventory item. So go to voice this time, register. And we need to put two things here. First is the name of the sample, which is power it up first. Uh, and this is, also, this is going to be the name of the sample that we are going to use in our program. And the other is the transcript. So what does the voice say really? In our case, I should power it up first. All right, uh, now how to use it? Let's say that uh, we would like to play that sample when, the in when an interactive screen is activated. So here we already have a method that, uh, that connects to activated signal. Uh, and if, if object name is screen, Then we are going to play this voice. Let's see if it works. I should power it up first. I should power it up first. Yeah, so that works. Uh, and of course, you can add more samples to your game. Uh, but sometimes in an adventure game, I would assume at least, you might want to 
leave some actions not uncommented, but the actions are so many and they are meaningless that you don't want to uh, prepare a specific audio sample for anything. Like if a person tries to use a sandwich on a door or a battery in a glass cup, then th this doesn't make sense, but you probably want to, the protagonist to say something just to, to fill the, the, uh, the silence. So for that thing, Goat has um, something called default uh, voice or default audio. Uh, if you want to use it, first you need to uh, register the samples as with any samples that you, you want to use. Uh, I already have three of those. And to just speed things up a tiny bit, I'm going to copy the configuration. So there are three samples, but why, what for, and this doesn't make sense. Which are things that you might say if, if our uh, player does something that is pointless. Uh, then we need to configure that these three samples are going to be the default audio names. All right. So when something meaningless happens, uh, one of these will be played at random. Uh, which one? Well, at random. So we, the program will decide. But what is a meaningless interaction? We also need to, uh, we the people who make the game, we need to decide it. So uh, we need to connect default audio uh, samples with, let's say, uh, go with an object and its signal. So in, let's say in go to inventory item used. Uh, so in this case, every time a single item used will be sent, a default audio sample should be played. Let's see if it works. All right, I, I'm picking up two items. Mm, I'm using... What for? What for? This doesn't make sense. And if I drag and drop this item here? What for? Also. But why? Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, these are, uh, you might want to comment some specific actions, uh, some specific meaningless actions in a uh, more, more uh, specific way, but that's up to you. If you, you can just use this to, to comment anything that a player does that doesn't make sense. But what if this signal is sent, item use, and this, this particular interaction makes sense. So for example, uh, we had this... Uh, uh, I should power, I should power it, up it up first. So how about I use the battery on this? What for? Well, the voice says that it should be powered up first and I used a battery to provide power and then it asks what for. So uh, probably this, is an in, uh, this, this interaction should take place and therefore it should not be commented like this. So uh, we can prevent default uh, files from being played. Like so, let me just... So in, uh, for example here, if uh, item name is battery and I used on the name is screen, then I want to prevent the default audio from playing. All right. So if I now pick it up, sorry. If I, sorry, if I use it on itself. What for? I do get the default sound, but if I use it here, nothing. Good. And also since uh, the voice said that I want to, uh, that it wants the uh, screen to be powered up first. How about we remove the battery after, uh, after it is used on a screen? So we, uh, we can not only subscribe, sorry, connect to signals in Goat, but we can also send commands to Goat. So for example, Goat in, it doesn't always make sense to send commands with Goat because some of these are just used internally by Goat and you usually don't have to change it. But with inventory, adding, replacing, removing items, that usually makes sense. Uh, 
So let's say that I want to remove item which is called battery. And let's see if that works. I'm picking up two items. I can see that there is both a battery and a floppy disk. And if I use it, the battery disappeared. Of course, I might also play a, a specific audio. Well, we have just one other audio sample, so let's reuse it. I know it doesn't make sense in this case. But if we play a specific audio, it will also prevent the default audio from being played. So, ah, I didn't have to pick both of them, sorry. So, if I just click on the screen, I should power it, up it plays audio, and if I use this, but why? it plays the default audio, but if I use this, I should power it, up it uses the audio I specified and does not play the default one, as probably expected. And one last thing, I, are we running out of time? No. Ah, okay. Then maybe not last, one last thing. So yeah, you can also, um, let's say, uh, uh, you, apart from adding items, removing items, you can also, for example, replace items. Uh, so if item name is a floppy disk and it was used on a floppy disk, so that use button was clicked, then I would like to replace, uh, replace item floppy disk by battery. Let's see if it works. So if, if I pick this one up, if I click... But why? Yeah, except we didn't prevent the default audio from being played. That's why uh, we, we heard but why. Okay, and oh, one last thing uh, that I wanted to show you. I've mentioned this settings screen. Uh, it is also based on global files and signals, so you can... As you can see, you, you can just uh, edit basic settings, uh, glow, shadow, reflections, uh, and full screen, of course. Oh, right, I could, for example, play music a bit louder to make it... But why? Yeah, it is louder now. <laughs> okay. uh, so these are saved in a text file here, and that text file is saved every time you change a setting. And um, I tried to make it as pretty as I can make it, but if you want to make your own one to, to fit your own game's style, uh, you can easily reuse the, the global GOAT settings file and signals associated with it, to, uh, and that will still be saved in the same uh, file. So saving on disk is done for you, and you just need to connect to proper signals. And there is a lot, sorry, there is a lot more features, a lot more things described uh, here on uh, GitHub. Uh, I hope to make this, to turn this into a proper read the docs page soon, uh, but that will take time. Uh, so yeah, you are welcome to try it. I hope it will make things easier for you. And that would be all for today, unless there are any questions. Uh, oh, Miskatonic Studio slash GOAT. This one. Yes, please. Um, Does it work? Is it working? Uh, I didn't read the README yet, but can you change the range of the grub system or uh, the interactive? Uh, yes, uh, not as a global settings in uh, GOAT itself, but the, the framework files are available here. So you would just go to the player, the, oh yeah, there are uh, helper scenes, which is probably not something that you, uh, which are like things attached to, for example, the player, this inventory bar, the inventory itself. And there are main scenes. Those are the scenes that you are supposed to use in your game. And there are three, player interactive, item interactive screen. So we would just go to player, uh, there is a, 
uh, raycast and you would just reduce the, the length of the raycast and that would be it. But yeah, uh, everything is open source, so you are welcome to, to try to, uh, to tinker with it. I know there are many features missing now, but there are issues ready. Uh, <laughs> I've, I've been using, I, I, I've been working on it on my own, but I've been using uh, GitHub's issues to keep track of all the features so you can see w which ones are already planned and you can add your own ones, no, no problem. And of course, uh, merge requests are welcome, but please consider that I might not merge them immediately because I would like to test them and I don't have that much time. But yeah, uh, please, please do with it whatever you want. Thank you. Um, thanks, this looks like a very, very nice uh, engine. Well, I was wondering, um, you now have uh, one specific uh, action icon for an object, say uh, a hand for the switch, uh, but what if you would want to have two? For example, you also want um, a uh, look at um, option, so to give a description. There is already an issue for oh, that. Oh, great. <laughs> uh, yeah, that would, uh, there, are, there is an idea to have things like, as you said, uh, to look at a thing just to hear uh, a comment, not, uh, an icon that would indicate you cannot interact with it, you can just comment it. So that would be a good idea. There is also another thing for, uh, in, uh, for detailed interaction. So for example, if you have a puzzle on a wall in an adventure game, and you could click on it and then the camera would move closer, maybe that would also need a different icon. So yes, uh, that is already planned. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, of course, you can, uh, uh, right now there is just one, well, two types of interactive objects. So uh, an icon wouldn't know which one, uh, the, the framework wouldn't know which other icon to display than the hand and the pointing finger. But you can easily add a new, uh, new enum to, to interactive item to like uh, indicate if this is a pickable item or interactable item or commentable item. So y y you are welcome to experiment with it. And, and what if they're both? So they're both commentable and uh, pickable? That is also, con uh, I also consider that. Uh, I was thinking about uh, extending this context menu so that you would have things like, uh, the right click button would not show the context inventory, but instead uh, an option to either pick it up, which would not always work, uh, comment it, which, which would probably always work unless we wouldn't prepare a comment, then it would play one of the default comments. Or, uh, in, uh, or use things from our inventory. So that might be one of the solutions how to, uh, to, to interact with an item in more than one way. Okay, thanks. Hi, uh, thank you for, for your presentation. <coughs> and did you ever, uh, ever think that your, uh, this quote frame framework as uh, it could be used for 2D games instead of two, uh, 3D games? Yes, there is an issue for that. Uh, maybe not, um, <laughs> sorry, maybe not uh, the, the whole uh, framework, but I realized that in many cases, people might not want to prepare 3D models for each, inter uh, each item in the inventory. I kind of like it to, uh, to see uh, detailed items and to know that maybe with some of them I can interact uh, in a more specific way, like press a button on a remote or put a SD card inside of the uh, phone or something. Uh, but I think there is already an issue to enable two-dimensional inventory items. So instead of a model, you would prepare another bitmap and it would be imported. But the whole framework for uh, like point and click games, uh, I'm, I think it would be a rather different, different experience than this one. Uh, I think a lot of signals could be, like the, the architecture of signals interactions that could be reused. So maybe in the future, who knows? But it, it's definitely, the, the turning this into a fully two dimensional framework is not in my plans yet. Okay, I have a secondary question. Um, I see all the interactions that you made between your uh, between the items you can pick up and uh, use, all are set in the same GD scripts. Uh, in your ex uh, is that right? Uh, there are f uh, well, there is a script for interactions and there is a script for inventory items. So item use on item, it will be a signal from goat inventory. Yeah. But item activated, selected, deselected, that will be part of goat interactions. Okay. So uh, all the the uh, all the use actions will be all in the same script. In your example, uh, uh, of course, you have only two items. Yeah. In 
um, in, in a real adventure game mm -hmm. finished, uh, ready to be released, you will have a lot of interactions. Uh, wouldn't it be very difficult to, uh, to manage, and wouldn't it be wouldn't it be easier to manage everything in more scripts and even maybe use something else than GDScript to uh, to make it easier for known programmers to use? Mm, I have not considered anything else than GDScript for this, but who knows? Uh, as, as in uh, a big game with a lot of items, a lot of interactions, I would think that it would still be manageable with string names. If, for example, uh, the item, like usually when, when you go through a game, uh, you probably have unique items. So this will be an empty battery, this will be a full bat or a charged battery, this will be a smartphone. And if you already found one smartphone, then another one probably wouldn't show as a smartphone, but a broken smartphone. So I still think that the number, the, the names would be rather unique and that would not collide with each other. As for uh, items in your uh, like, uh, surrounding in your en environment, uh, those you, you can easily add some sort of naming convention like uh, free free letters for the sh a short name of the scene that are used uh, or just a full name of the scene that, that they are used in so this will be a switch in a living room this will be a switch in a prison so you can you, you can probably make a, a distinction like that thanks <coughs> Are you or anyone you know using the, um, this engine, this framework, to make, um, in any games currently? Thank you for asking that. Uh, as I said at, at the beginning, this was not supposed to be a framework. This was supposed to be a short adventure game that had a wrong script. And then I, tried, I basically tried to make a prison escape game. So I had to design a prison and then I had to design a way to escape from it. That took a lot of time and eventually I failed. So then I switched that script. But the scope was too big, which I realized a bit too late. And eventually, I, I've, made, I've used whatever I had by far to, create, to, to put it into a framework and a very short demo game that, is, that you can see uh, in, in this GIF here. Uh, so there is a game, because I don't believe a framework will be useful at all if there isn't something that uses it. So you, you need to, 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 to use tools to, to prove that they are useful. So there is a very simple demo game. And while I started working on this demo game with the framework I had, I realized how many things don't really apply to, an, to a real game situation, even though it was a very small one. Uh, but in terms of bigger games, not yet. But I hope that the next step for it will be to create uh, a game that takes more than two minutes to finish, uh, because that way I will. Uh, well, there there is a couple of issues that I know I can uh, take on right now, like uh, implementing the transcript in different languages, for example. Uh, that uh, that uh, 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 that can be done uh, without trying it in the game first. But I hope the next step for this frame for this template would be to make an actual game with it to see how many of these features are actually useful, how many are missing. Uh, how many looked good on uh, uh, like on paper on on this very simple one and are completely not usable in a real game? Uh, so yeah, that, so in, is there any big game use uh, or real game that uses the template? Not yet, but I I am working on it. Thank you, Pavel. Thank you.